I heard this blood-curdling scream. A two-year-old is swept away by an icy stream. He was dead for an hour and 41 minutes. And lives. Nothing short of a miracle. Find out how. Just give him over to me. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Today, we're going to show you supernatural stories. You'll hear from people who were dead or on the brink of death and miraculously survived. Our first story happened less than a year ago in Pennsylvania when two-year-old Gardell Martin fell into an icy stream and was found cold, frozen, and by all medical measures, dead. March 11th, 2015, a day Rose Martin remembers well. Three of her sons were playing by the stream that runs through the backyard of their Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania home. It was one of the first warm days, and obviously that's a lot of the reason. The children were so anxious to be outside, and I had supper on, and I was just ready to call them in for supper, actually. I heard this blood-curdling scream. It came from her son, Greg. Two-year-old Gardell was missing. They didn't realize he had fallen into the icy stream that had become swollen from the winter thaw. After Rose and her six other children searched every inch of the three-acre property, she called 911. Rose also called her husband, Doyle, a truck driver who was three hours away. We knew there was nothing more we could do. I knew there was help on the way. The children were just crying and I just gathered the children around me. We just prayed that God would help us be calm and that someone could find Gardell. That somebody was a neighbor who had joined the search. He found Gardell farther downstream, trapped in the fence line. He carried the toddler's lifeless body to the road just as EMS arrived. EMT Anthony Peralia was first on the scene. After doing some pretty quick assessment, um, realized that you know, he was in, in cardiac arrest and just immediately started CPR. At that point, I really didn't see a, a dead two-year-old. I saw life in his, in his little eyes. Even then, he knew it was a race against the clock. Gardell was taken to Evangelical Community Hospital in nearby Lewisburg. Dr. Frederick Lapp was on the team who continued CPR and attempted to warm the boy's body. Pretty grim. You know, there are cases that we all read about in medical school and in training and severe hypothermic patient survives, but it's still the great exception to the rule. On the way there, Rose learned that Gardell would have to be life flighted to Geisinger Hospital, a level one trauma center in Danville, Pennsylvania. I just felt again and again like God was saying, just give him over to me. And when it came down to it, I had no other choice. It was out of my control. Waiting for life flight was EMT Perilia and paramedic Howie Mast, who also responded to the emergency call. I said to someone that night after you know, we walked away, and I said, you know, if he lives, it'll be nothing short of a miracle. At Geisinger, staff continued with CPR. By now, it had been over an hour since Gardell had a pulse, and Dr. Richard Lambert was having difficulty starting an IV. They were doing such effective CPR, it was really bouncing little Gardell around um, to make sure that the heart was being compressed properly. I did have to have him stop very briefly a couple times to allow me to get that needle in. There was another concern. Gardell's blood pH had become acidic, a clear indication of oxygen deprivation. The number alarmed Dr. Frank Maffei. It was the lowest I've ever seen. And I, I remember seeing that. I remember looking at Dr. Lambert and saying, 6.5, Rich, we're in, we're in a tough spot here. All this time, the Martins Church had been praying, and other churches throughout central Pennsylvania had joined them. Now en route to Geisinger, Rose had received no word on Gardell's condition. Yeah, you just, there's a lot of things that get through your mind. You just wonder if your life will ever, you know, go back to normal. If you, you know, you always realize there's people that do lose their children, and it's a reality but it's always someone else. When Rose arrived, she learned Gardell had not responded to treatment and had been taken to surgery for a cardiopulmonary bypass. It was his last hope. Then as the surgeon was about to begin, 
Doctors Maffei and Lambert said wait. Literally with our cardiothoracic surgeon, Dr. Russ Carter, scrubbed and ready to uh, cannulate for that procedure, we did an, a last pulse check. The team stopped CPR. Ultimately, not only did we get a pulse, but we, we got a, a, a pulse that really was indicative of a heart that was recovering. It was a good sign, but Gardell had been without a pulse for an hour and 41 minutes, and doctors were very concerned about brain damage. Then Gardell showed them that there was hope. This child's trying to open his eyes, and we just clung to that hope. With each passing hour, Gardell improved more quickly than doctors could have hoped for. And he's just getting better and better, and, and so his, his rate of recovery, I think, was stunning. Two days later, he went home. So we went sort of from shock and suspense to almost a high, like, this is just unreal. <laughs> Within weeks, Gardell was once again in his backyard playing with his brothers and sisters. And while he probably won't remember his brush with death, others will. When I think about God's presence in this, it's hard for me to reconcile that, that it all happened by chance. He was dead for an hour and 41 minutes by all the measures that we measure life. So for him to ultimately survive neurologically intact, you have to give some credit to some divine intervention. You really have to. She's getting scared. Just realize the power of God. We just had no question that it was an answer to prayer. Just realize the power of God. Here it is from the Bible in Psalm 107. When you're in trouble, they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saves them out of their distresses. He set his word and healed them and delivered them from their dest destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. If you're in trouble, I encourage you, go read Psalm 107. There's a whole list of things there that God delivers people from. But realize he's the healer. In your time of trouble, call to him and he will answer your prayer. Well, if you need a miracle, all you have to do is stay with us. We're going to be praying for you la later in the show. And if you want to start posting prayer requests, I encourage you to do that. There's a place on our Facebook page where you can post prayer requests. You can do that in any comment section on any story. And there are people here who will pray specifically for your need. We're going to be praying for you later in the show, so stay tuned for that. But first, we've got a Marine who took a bullet in the head. The bullet went into my brain and went out my head. I died five times. Hear his amazing story of survival. That's up next. While serving our country in Iraq, Brandon Burns was shot in the head and he lost his life, not just once, but five times. Beginning in 2003, oh. Oh. the world's eyes were glued to the invasion of Iraq. Marine Corps machine gunner Brandon Burns had a front row seat in the Battle of Fallujah, which almost cost him his life. I was shot. The bullet went into my brain and went out my Head. I was medevac from Fallujah to Baghdad. I died five times. Doctors told Brandon he'd never walk or talk. He couldn't cope with that news. I uh, wanted to give up. However, after four years of physical therapy, this Marine can walk and talk. During PT, he met and married Laura. Brandon doesn't let his partial paralysis prevent him from taking care of his family. I wouldn't have come this far unless God has given me the strength. Brandon's injuries prevent him from working full time. He wanted to work part time, though, for a church planting ministry near Quantico Marine Base. The problem? Quantico is in Virginia, and the Burns lived in Memphis. The family started packing anyway, trusting God for moving money they didn't have. 
I wasn't worried about the finances because the Lord has always provided. And he got full faith that this is all going to come together. Back in Virginia, Pillar Church pastor Colby Garman knew that coming up with the funds to move the family would be tough. As excited as we are to integrate them into the ministry life, we recognize it takes partners, partners like CBN. Pastor Garman asked CBN's Helping the Homefront to relocate the Burns. While the Burns were packing up their home, they had a surprise visitor. Hey, how are you? Good. Good to oh, see you. Man. Were you expecting me today? No. <laughs> no? Pastor Garman told the couple that helping the home front would pay for their move. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, yes. And he had even bigger news. We're going to pay for your first month's rent in, in the new home that you guys are going to be moving into. That Thank you. is awesome. <laughs> you, think that, you think that'll help you guys out? Yes. yes. The Burns settled into their new home in Virginia and are now living their dream sharing the gospel. We're so thankful for uh, helping the home front because they've looked at uh, a guy like Brandon and said, we want to be a part of that. We want to help a guy like that uh, be able to pursue the dreams that God's put in his heart. I cannot say thank you enough. Uh, yeah, come here. That's just one of the things that CBM partners do. If you want to be a part of it, if you want to be a part of being that helping hand. Give us a call and say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is it? It's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day. So do it now, 888-777-1999, or you can log on to 700clubinteractive.com. And on the giving page there, if you want to designate a gift to helping the home front, we want to help families of active duty service members. Uh, they're serving too, we want to help them. and particularly for the injured vets who are coming back, we want to extend a, a helping hand to them. So if you want to be a part of that, there's a place on the website where you can designate your gift. Do it now. Call us, 888-777-1999. Well, still to come, an illusionist gets a dose of reality. They told me that you're going to die in two months, and either the chemo would kill me or the cancer would kill me. It's one or the other. And he reveals the secret to his greatest trick, beating leukemia. That's up next, right after this. As a magician, Jim Monroe questioned the reality of God. But after he was diagnosed with a rare terminal disease, he soon realized what was truth and what was illusion. When you're a magician, you learn there's a wizard behind the curtain all the time. You're formulating in your head how all these things are working. It's very methodical and logistical and you're putting it all together. It kind of strips the wonder a little bit, you know? But I think God knew that, you know? So my question for the Lord was, I know you are who you say you are, and I believe that you did walk the earth and I acknowledge your truth, but I, I need you to make this so real to me that I cannot ignore it. Just make it really real to me. I began this really, you know, intense pain began in my leg. My leg began to swell up pretty bad and they said it was a blood clot and just needed to get medicine and uh, but then the pain continued to increase. I went to the hospital and got diagnosed within the day. Like they knew right away. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia was the initial diagnosis. My white blood cells, they were growing so rapidly. They were um, like a bomb went off in my body. They told me that if you don't do anything, you're gonna die in two months. My first thoughts again were, man, God, where are you? It'd be great if there was some protection. It'd be great if you could come in here and heal me like now. You know, if you are real, you got to step into the situation and do something. You know, wrap it up in a nice big bow and send me off on my way because I cannot do this. I had no idea what I was in for. The setup that God was getting ready to do in my life to just blow me away. It gets bigger, better, and more fabulous than any illusion you can ever see, more powerful than any music you can hear. 
And then they, they told me the, the worst news, which was this is even more unique of a cancer than we initially anticipated. And like the bad news just kept getting worse. It's called Philadelphia Positive ALL, and we can't cure it with chemotherapy, but we're gonna get you into remission, but then they knew it was gonna come back at a 90% chance of relapse. And either the chemo would kill me, or the cancer would kill me. It's one or the other. So they said the only way around this is if you have a bone marrow transplant, to be totally well. Your whole life is hinging upon finding someone in the world whose DNA matches yours close enough so that they're willing to go through with this procedure. After a few months of chemo, they said out of those nine million people, there's there's only 16 potential matches in the in the world that we know of that might be able to cure you of your disease. And then about a month later, there was one perfect match. It was a 10 out of 10 match. And they said, and we've contacted this person and uh, they're, they're willing to go through with the, the procedure. As they're preparing you for this, they say things like, it's really cool because on you know April 23rd, you're gonna be like a baby inside the womb all over again. And you get a, you get a brand new birthday. You know, essentially you're gonna be born again. There's chemotherapy to treat cancer, and then there's chemotherapy to destroy your immune system. And the reason why is because they're trying to get rid of the old man. In my mind, in my worldview, made a lot of sense. They, they destroy you. You just don't have any control. To go stand up and walk over to that chair and sit down takes me, requires all the energy in my body. I just don't have any energy. I haven't eaten anything edible like the last four or five days. <clears throat> but I have a feeling today is gonna just be another really bad day. The scripture that I clung to was uh, to live as Christ, to die as gain, Philippians 1. There is this moment where they call it the first hour they brought my wife out of the room and they and they didn't tell me this, but they said, you know, this is the most sensitive time of this entire process. In this next hour, he's either gonna accept this new blood or he's gonna reject it and potentially die. And we just want you to know that. They they dripped that the new blood, the one in nine million matched blood into my body. And my body received it. My body received the, the perfect blood. I was resurrected from the dead because of the perfect match in the world that was able to be substituted on my behalf so I could live again. It's literally no longer I who live, but it's someone else who lives on the inside of me and the life that I now live. I live by faith in the new system, the new blood, the new life that was willingly substituted on my behalf. But one thing that I don't have question about is, is who Jesus is. Um, and how he wants to be intimately involved in our lives. I feel like I'm Lazarus. I feel like I'm alive today because the gospel in, was illustrated most perfectly in my life. I feel like Lazarus. Realize that these stories are real. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did 2,000 years ago, you read in these Bibles these wonderful miracles, how the deaf could hear, how the blind could see, how even the dead were raised to life. And you go, can this be real? And the answer is yes. These same resurrections are happening today. They're happening and can happen to you because the same Jesus that did that is with you now. He wants to heal you. He wants to restore. He wants to answer your prayer. He wants to be your all in all. He died so that you could live, so that you could have everlasting life. That's why he came. That's why he loved you so much that he was willing to do that for you. Now we're going to pray. And before we pray, we've got some prayer requests that have come in. And if you want to post your prayer request, again, all you have to do is log on to our website at 700 Club Interact, 
active.com. You can go to our Facebook, Facebook page, and there you can post your request. And if you do it on Facebook, then a lot of people who go to our website will be able to pray for you. And I've got a few prayer requests that have come in. Brooke's the first one. My mom is fighting cancer for the second time. Please pray for her. And then Carol writes in, says, pray for my husband, Robert. He has a disorder where his body absorbs too much iron, and he's on the list, a trans transplant list for a new liver. He's been given a year to live. He suffers so much, but loves God very much and smiles every day, no matter what. Pray that he will get his new liver soon. And then Albertina writes in, I just found out that I'm HIV positive. Please pray for my healing. I need a miracle. Let's pray for these. And don't just watch, but join in. And if you need prayer, if you need something today, ask God for it. Let's join together. Realize there's a great circle of prayer being created uh, with thousands of people praying. And let's pray and let's believe God. The Bible says if two or more agree touching anything, we've got two or more agreeing right now, and we're going to pray, and God is going to answer. Let's go to prayer now. Lord, we just lift these needs to you right now. We lift Brooke's mom's mom to you and just ask you healed the cancer, and you're still healing. And you're able to restore. You're able to heal. And so for this second one, this second recurrence, Lord God, just heal her now. Stretch forth your hand and perform a miracle. And for Robert and this problem with iron and his blood, iron being absorbed by his body, you're able to heal his liver. You're able to restore it and make it new again. So, Lord, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, and we ask for Robert, we ask for his liver, and we ask that, that joy be restored to him. We ask you take away all that pain and all that problem now. In Jesus' name, be healed. And for Albertina and this horrible virus, this HIV, we just ask that her blood be cleansed and that she be made whole now. And there be no more virus, no more trace of it, not hiding in any organ or anywhere in her body, but be restored and be cleansed now. And now, Lord, for those who are watching and their prayer requests, they're calling you and they're on you in their time of trouble, just as you wrote in Psalm 107, they are calling out to you. And Lord, we remember your wonderful works. We remember your mighty deeds. We remember that your mercy is new every morning. And we just lean back into your mercy and to your grace and to your love. And we rely on you. And we know that you will move again. So stretch forth your hand to perform wonders, to do mighty miracles in their bodies now. Do it, Lord. Restore, heal, touch. Let your presence surround them. Be on them. Be all around them, Lord God. And let them know that their prayer has been heard and has been answered today. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us. 888-777-1999. We leave you this word from John 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come unto judgment, but has passed from death unto life.